Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to fit your SRAM Force ETAP Access front derailleur to your bike. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. Right, so here we have this SRAM Force Access front derailleur for a 2 by setup. Now first thing you want to do is make sure you've got a fully charged battery installed and you've paired the derailleur with your other components. If you want to know how to do that I'll put a link on the uh, screen. So I'll just run through some of the bits to look out for on this while I've got it in my hand so I can show you more clearly. So we've got the uh, adjustment screws there, the two, as you can see. So the low screw, they're both two and a half mil hex heads, adding keys. So the low screw is the bottom one there, and the top one's high screw. Then you've got the mounting bolt there, which is four mil hex head. To mount onto your brace on your on your hanger, as you can see. Then you've got on the back side of it, you've got a little bolt that will go in just there. It's that hole, which is a two mil hex head for the different shims for shimming it away from keeping it away from your frame, just giving it a bit of extra support when it's finally finished the install. That's what that's for. So, what you want to do is make sure that the drill is to start with is on the outer chain ring to start with, and you've got a line you can see there, a little white dash on there. Make sure that's in line with the outer chain ring, that's the little mark, so you can see that. And then you've got a little mark just there, you can just see that. You'll see on your derailleur that you line up with the chain ring, the teeth on the chain ring in that in that mark there on the mark. So that's just pointing that out so you can see it there. You see what I'm actually talking about. So that's the derailleur. So let's go ahead. Let's get it on the bike. So all we do is offer the derailleur up to the hanger and then using the mounting bolt I've put a bit of grease on the thread of the mounting bolt and he sees just because you don't want to get it stuck in there so you put a bit of anti seize on it before you thread it in and we just thread it all the way in then we just nip it up Just get it just tacked in place at the moment, don't tighten it right up, it's just got to be just so it's holding it there. And then we can sort out the gap here between the cage and the teeth on the chain ring. Right, so the drail is still on the outer chain ring. I've just moved the camera so I can show you better. What you want to do is, before you fully tighten your mounting bolt, just drop the drail down and I'll zoom in so I can show you the mark. So the teeth on the outer chain ring lined up with the mark on the inside there you can see that just in here that dash there so they're lined up with that and then you can go ahead and tighten up your mounting bolt and torque that up look six newton meters fine on that so tighten that up and then we move on to the next step and i'll just show you that so once you torque your bolt up what you're looking for is the mark I showed earlier, the little white dash there, that has to be in line with your outer chain ring. So if you put your derailleur on and you've um, sorted that out and you've tightened it up where it should be and you find that, that the cage is slightly this way or ever so slightly inboard, then the way to sort that out is just get hold of it gently and push it round one way or pull it round the other way bit by bit just edge it round until you look and it's in line with the outer chain ring so once you've done that then I'll put the camera back on the stand and I'll show you the next step right so the next step is we shift the derailleur down to the inner chain ring like so now once you've done that you need your two and a half mil hex head and the low screw which is the bottom one there 
we locate that and then what we need to do is bring the front of the cage there so the front of the cage we need to bring that out in line with the tooth on the largest chain ring so we got to do is locate the low screw there turn it clockwise and the cage will move out this way so you just turn it like so just bring the cage out till the front of it there is in line right so once you've done that and it's in line with the teeth and what you can do is just get yourself a hex head 1.5 mil and just check that it goes in there so just put it in top of the teeth there and just under the cage if that goes in there it should fit in so if it fits in there then you know you've got the gap right there you don't want any bigger than say a two mil gap there for that right so once you're happy with the adjustments and the setup what you can do is you put your wedge in the back of your derailleur if you can get one in this just helps to support it against the frame now they come in various sizes, you've got a thin one like that and you've got a slightly bigger one and then a bigger one again. So it all depends what size seat tube you've got on your bike. So if you need a thin one, obviously on here as you can see the smallest one won't do anything. It just goes in there, it's not actually contacting anything, so it's not actually supporting anything really. So that one would be no good in this particular application with a round seat tube. So you can see if I get the next one up, then it will sit against the frame, the seat tube there, and it will just wedge in there like that. And when you look through, you'll still be able to get the 2mm hex there that go in that hole and the slot in the bottom of here. So this power will be contacting the frame like that, and you'll still be able to get the 2mm hex in there. We'll just push it all the way in there and then what you do is you screw in your 2mm hex there just tighten that up and that'll be the wedge installed just to support the derailleur. So if you can get yours in then you can use one. Also make sure when you refit the back wheel that it's not contacting the wedge when you've got, when you've got your tyre in and your wheel in place, make sure the tyre is not contacting it in any way, some, some frames they can be, if it's like that then don't use the wedge. Right, as you can see we've got the chain fitted and we're on the smallest chain ring at the front. So what you would want to do now is with the rear derailleur on the largest at the back, so 28, 33, whatever cassette you've got, you want to check the gap in here. So to, if your chain is touching the inside of the cage there, what you need to do is locate the screw there, the lowest one, and then turn that to move it away. You want to move it anti-clockwise. So I'm turning this anti-clockwise and it's moving the derailleur cage away ever so slightly from the chain, making contact with it. So you only want a little gap there, like 0.5 of a millimetre gap. So if you just look down and have a look, then as long as it's not making contact with it, then that gap there is set. So what we need to do now is shift up to the largest chain ring and move the rear derailleur down to the smallest, the 10 tooth at the back. And then we'll check the setting when we're on the outside chain ring. Right, so once you're happy with the low adjustment, you can, like I said, you can shift up to the largest chain ring and then you're ready to do the high adjustment. So, same hex head again, two and a half mil in the top one this time. And then what you're looking to do is from the lowest at the back, so the 10 sprocket at the back, 
and you're looking for a 0.5 mil gap roughly between the chain here and the cage on the inside when you look in you can look from the front up in there and have a look so what you want to do is if it's touching there just turn this so you want to turn it anti-clockwise and anti-clockwise will move it over so anti-clockwise moves it this way so the cage this way and then clockwise will move it back that way but you more than likely need it to move it this way so if you turn it anti-clockwise and then just look up in there and have a look you might have to pedal round while you're doing it to see because sometimes the chain can just move very slightly as you're pedalling so but it's going to be very close whatever happens you're never going to get a massive gap there because it will affect it the other way then when you move up the cassette you go across the cassette a bit it'll be touching on the inside so you just need it just so it's just passing right so once you've adjusted your screws then you can go ahead and shift up and down a few times to make sure it's working properly and then just give it another double check make sure that the settings are right on there so there's the steps complete for you so you found the video helpful if you did remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content till next one ride safe and i'll see you then